Good evening, everyone. Time for another member update. Now, this is the two-hour chart of silver, and you can see here that we're definitely forming up into a pennant, fitting into this sharper trend line right now. Probably a pretty good chance that this sharper trend line will be broken, and we will form the pennant in relation to this longer-term trend line. Still a very rapidly rising trend line, you can see, uh, if we just go from the first of the month to the first of the month, we go from about 1580 in the first of May, I'm sorry, the first of June to about 1760, 1780 or so. So we're talking about two dollars a month is the slope of this uh, this uh, rise, which is which is fairly steep, not nearly as steep as this one. So we'll see if this pennant continues to form or if we get a correction back to this trend line it's looking now like it it wants to break out you can see we've got these higher lows consistently here so it's probably going to come to a resolution in this short term wise tomorrow sometime or maybe uh, when the market opens up uh, on monday now this chart here is from Silver Doctors, this is one that describes the 50-day moving average. That's uh, some one that a lot of people put stock in, and you can see here he's commenting that the 50-day moving average threshold line, bullion banks will defend this trend line. So you can see that 50-day moving average now is sitting at about 2035, and you can see up here in the chart, this is right in the area where this pennant is forming. So it uh, the information matches up here it may be an epic battle and uh, we could get that blast off to 26 or we could get an attack and uh, bring the price back down into the teens either one is quite possible now I want to spend the rest of the time on this Puerto Rican bailout that's happened I like to check these stories especially when you have stories that kind of fade into the woodwork and uh, they just they're a big story for a while and then they disappear and that always makes me wonder what's going on behind the scenes now this this whole Puerto Rican bailout thing is very very fishy because it uh, nothing is really clear on what's going to happen with it it's almost like what they did was they just made a token move that doesn't really do anything. Maybe they don't intend to do anything. Maybe they intend to just push things off till after the election. I believe that the control board, the oversight board that's going to be appointed is going to be appointed by September, or the end of September. So this probably will spill into the election. But I just wanted to cover this story and another important story about bond offering that they're doing just to show you how disingenuous this whole thing is so this is uh, the governor now beginning to push back saying that it's going to uh, limit the rights of puerto ricans washington puerto rico governor Ale alejandro garcia padilla is glad congress came to the rescue of his debt ridden commonwealth but he said tuesday that the fiscal relief law carried a heavy price the bill passed last month and signed into law by president barack obama allows puerto rico to extend payments on its 72 billion dollar debt and protects the island's government from lawsuits by bondholders so keep that in mind this is a retroactive uh change here this was not something that was anticipated this is not something that was negotiated when those bonds were sold this is uh, government interference in contracts and it's after the fact so one would obviously ask what's to prevent them from doing the same thing in the future uh, one would think about what they've done here by coming in and overriding these valid contracts and keeping them from being litigated what they have done is they have effectively squeezed 
them out of the bond market? Who's going to lend them any money if they're allowed to not follow their agreements? But that's not the case. We'll see in the next article. So let's keep going. In exchange for the debt restructuring and legal protections, the measure sets up a seven-person oversight board that Garcia Padilla said would limit the autonomy of his people. I needed to choose misery for my people or unnecessary intervention from the federal government in our democratic institutions, Garcia Padilla said at the Brookings Institution, a Washington research center. Garcia Padilla said Puerto Rico's Oversight, Management, and Economic Stability Act was controversial among the island's 3.7 million residents, with 54% opposing it in a recent poll. The legislation, months in the making, was a rare bipartisan compromise on Capitol Hill under pressure from lobbyists for banks and finance insurance firms. Many Republican lawmakers opposed giving Puerto Rico any debt relief, and many Democratic lawmakers were against setting up an oversight board with the power to modify or even overturn budgets, laws, and fiscal decisions of the governor and the legislative assembly. In another Democratic concession, Republicans included provisions restricting overtime pay in Puerto Rico and authorizing a reduced minimum wage for younger workers. The board will be made up of four Republicans and three Democrats appointed by Obama from congressional recommendations. The appointees will be outsiders with no required representation by Puerto Ricans. The Oversight Board will not deal with our budget if we do it the right way, Garcia Padilla told an audience of scholars mixed with lawyers for banks, bondholders, insurers, and other parties with large stakes in Puerto Rico's finances, saying, We need to consolidate agencies. Garcia Padilla said the number of government employees had dropped from 105,000 when he took office in January 2013 to 89,000 now. Government pension funds are severely underfunded, taking in just seven cents for each dollar paid out, along with the $72 billion in accumulated government debt. The funds have a $46 billion shortfall. Now, I did some quick math on this one. If you take $46 billion and you divide it by that $89,000, you actually come up with a half a million dollars per person. So it's they must have some very large assumptions as to how much they need to pay out those pensions or those are very very rich pensions i would really like to see the figures on those pensions of course they're not going to tell you about those because this is all just another scam uh, to pay people who work for the government uh, who don't work very hard and are very very overpaid To increase revenues, the government has raised gas and sales taxes, but but Garcia Padilla said lawmakers had resisted his bid to replace the sales tax with a value-added tax of the sort used in more than 100 countries. So they're talking about raising taxes. Uh, You have to remember that the vast majority of the population, I think I read 75% of the population is on either Medicare or Medicaid, and an enormous number on unemployment and welfare. So their solution to uh, fill the hole for these overpaid government workers is to tax the poor population more. Incredible. Independent Senator Bernie Sanders of Vermont, who recently ended his Democratic presidential campaign, was among 30 senators who voted against a bailout bill. He likened the oversight board to a colonial master for the island. I agree. We should have just let the island go bankrupt. All those debts would be wiped out. They'd not be able to go into the bond market. They'd have to balance their budget. They'd have to lay off uh, at least half of the government employees and cut the salaries of the rest. That's what should have happened. Republican Senator Marco Rubio and Democrat Senator Bill Nelson, both of Florida, voted for the legislation. House of Representatives passed the measure by 297 to 127. And we'll skip down here. Garcia Padilla said two key changes in federal law had sped Puerto Rico's fiscal dissent, 1984 bill that removed bankruptcy protection from it, and 1996 legislation that phased out over a decade tax incentives for American companies had received for 80 years to invest in the territory. The tax incentives ended in 2006, just ahead of the Great Recession, I love that term, that crippled the mainland two years, delivering a double whammy to Puerto Rico's economy. Under critical questioning from some audience members Tuesday, Garcia Padilla accepted some responsibility for his government having issued more bonds that added to the debt and were later downgraded by Moody's to junk status. 
In retrospect, Garcia Padilla said he might not have signed off on selling the bonds because they continued past administration's policies of paying for essential social services with credits. Now, this is really what we're talking about. And I'm going to show you in the next article, this is actually what's going on now. This is absolutely uh, beyond belief, really. It's borderline psychotic. So while we're talking about putting in place a control board, and of course, we know that Puerto Rico defaulted on, I think it was $2 billion worth of bonds uh, right when the Congress passed that bill. They're already planning to re-enter the debt market. Yes, that's correct. Puerto Rico plotting bond market return after its record default. <laughs> Water agencies looking to raise $900 million in debt sale. The market is tough at this moment, financial officials say. Puerto Rico just defaulted on about $1 billion due to bondholders, has declared its debt too crushing to pay, and is about to undergo an unprecedented financial takeover by the U.S. government. So what's next on the agenda? Finding investors willing to lend it $900 million. The Puerto Rico Aqueduct and Sewer Authority wants to issue the debt through a new agency to finance construction work delayed by the government's fiscal crisis. What do you mean, construction work? Why do you need construction work? Uh, oh, well, our, our sewers are falling apart. Sure. And you're going to spend that on that. No, you're going to spend it on corruption, salaries for overpaid government employees. Here we go. They're already back at the trough. This is incredible. As an inducement to skeptics, the agency would give investors first claim on revenue it collects from water and sewer bills, according to Efrain Acosta, the director of finance for the utility. It may also exchange an additional $1.1 billion of securities for its outstanding bonds to investors willing to accept less than they're owed. So they're asking for more money at the very time when they're defaulting on old money. Now, how can this even happen? Well, it happens when we have bond markets that are run by corrupt governments. We already know that we're moving into negative interest rates around the world. I think the figure I saw the other day was $14 trillion now in sovereign uh, debt that is paying negative rates. Governments are buying up the debts of other governments. The central banks are printing up money to buy the debt of insolvent governments. And here we have the utterly absurd idea that Puerto Rico, while it's still in the midst of a default, is out there trying to borrow more money. You just can't make this stuff up. It's incredible uh, that they would try to, again, entice investors with some promise about having first claim on revenue when they just reneged on all of the contractual obligations that they had. If you remember, the bond investors who were threatening to sue, who were trying to stop the bailout bill, as it was called, uh, they were running ads and doing all kinds of things like that. Uh, they tried to stop the bill and litigate because they had been promised special uh, collection. They it actually some of them had been written into Puerto Rico's constitution. So this is the utter insanity of a system that is falling apart so fast that they actually, uh, while they're in the midst of default, they are already plotting their next uh, scam where they're just going to default again. We know that because if you just do the simple math. There's only 3 million people there. Uh, a huge percentage work for the government. Another huge per percentage are on public benefits, whether that's welfare, unemployment. Uh, there really isn't any tax base. They're talking about raising the tax base to support these pensions that amount to a half a million dollars per employee, which is absolutely unbelievable. I think a lot of Americans... Uh, stateside wish they had pensions like that. So the whole scheme is going to collapse. They know it. This bill was just a way of kicking the can down the road. That's my opinion. But back to the silver chart. And I did do a lookup of the lunar series to see what the availability was. It's very, very slim right now. The half ounce monkeys are going for roughly $15. 
which is that's kind of commensurate with the silver price um, but they're not there's really not any other coins available there's some kind of bottleneck going on at the Perth Mint. I did notice at Atmex they had a buyback price for those half ounce monkeys for $12. So that would tell me they're not able to source those anymore from the Perth Mint. So I expect probably the Perth Mint Lunar Series are, are going to continue to dry up in availability as the silver price rises. Uh, that's to be expected. Hopefully a lot of you did some stacking early on those and can watch them rise as the price goes forward. And we'll talk to you next time.